My name is Georgette Camogne. I'm Associate Professor in the Department of Pharmacology and Experimental Neuroscience and Vice Chair for Faculty Development and Resource Allocation. I graduated from the University of Bristol, United Kingdom, and that's where I got my PhD, followed by postdoctoral training at the University of Cambridge in England and the University of Oklahoma. So I've been here at UNMC since 2005. And my lab is focused on the mechanism of HIV-induced vascular dysfunction and how that affects the progression of disease in HIV-infected patients. So one of the main focuses in the lab is to identify how HIV and infected cells alter the blood-brain barrier structure and allow HIV to get into the brain. And we are focusing on that for two primary reasons. A significant number of HIV-infected patients develop HIV-associated neurocognitive impairment, and some move on to HIV dementia at the end of uh, at the end stage of the disease. And those dementia can be quite complicated and can be deleterious in infected patients. And dementia occurs because HIV and infected cells cross the blood-brain barrier, and once they get into the brain, they infect brain macrophage, macroglia, and secret toxic product that kill neurons. And it's the killing of the loss of neuron that causes dementia in the long run. So we are trying to determine how the virus and infected cells alter the blood-brain barrier structure and allow the virus and infected cell to get into the brain. For that purpose, we use both in vitro study, in vivo and ex vivo study. For our in vitro study, we use primary human brain endothelial cells, which are the major cells that form the blood-brain barrier. Followed by this in vitro system, we use ex vivo system, where we can isolate macro vessels directly from disease and non-disease patients. And by analyzing those ex vivo tissue to complement our in vitro studies, we can have a more clearer picture of how those brain vessels are there and allow the virus to get into the brain. And currently, we know that most of drugs used to treat infected patients doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier and doesn't get into the brain. That means that for patients who already have the virus into the brain, the virus is in a sanctuary in the brain. And although you can have drugs that will eliminate the that will kill the virus, most of the virus from the blood of the patient. Those drugs can nourish the brain and the virus continue to multiply in the brain and kill neurons. So some of the strategy is to devise mechanism how the drug can most penetrate the blood brain barrier and get into the brain. So we are doing that project in associated in association with other faculty in the department and we have a large group in the department that have been able to encapsulate HIV drug to nanoparticle. And the goal is to find out how well those HIV drug encapsulate to nanoparticle can, uh, can penetrate through the blood-brain barrier and get into the brain. So this is one of the major focus of research uh, currently ongoing in the lab. So we use diverse technique for this study, and this includes molecular biology technique, genetic array and protein macroarray technology. We also use protein chemistry and immunofluorescence technique. My lab is a very diverse lab, and we are an international group. So the group is made of people like myself. I was born and raised in Cameroon before moving to England for my graduate studies. We have people from Latin America, we have people from Asia, including China and Nepal, and we have people from the US. So we are an international group and we work, uh, most of the project we work on is done in teamwork and we are a very cohesive group.